Welcome back to Everard Junction. Today I'm going to be installing some flashing tail lamps on various items of rolling stock. I've been using these for a couple of years now. Uh, the train on the left hand side of your screen has had that lamp installed for a little over a year and it still works perfectly and I have a couple of other trains on the layout that have them fitted as well and you may have seen those over the last few months. So today I'm going to install some more of those flashing tail lamps as it adds a lovely bit of detail to the train, just something a little bit more exciting to look at as the train goes around the layout and it's also a key piece of detail that you see on the real railways. In real life this is used to signify the end of the train. This is the back of the train is what that light is telling everybody that it passes by. As models are becoming more and more sophisticated and advanced, this feature is becoming standard on numerous items of rolling stock. In the case here, these Acura scale PTA wagons have the option of a flashing tail lamp. Most items of rolling stock do not have this feature though, it's still very much uh, a new development. A quick note about locomotives. Most of the manufacturers supply locomotives with lights, and in the case of this Class 60, running without any wagons or coaches, it is entirely appropriate for it to display its red lights, as in real life, this would let people know that this engine is not pulling anything. When you hook this locomotive up to a train, there is no need to display the red lights, and in practice, they were switched off in real life. This option is not offered on all models, and I've had a couple of questions in the comments asking about it. You will see some of my locomotives running, displaying the red tail lamps in the case of this Hornby Class 60, because it does not have the ability to turn them off unless I take the model apart and either snip the wires or fit um, some sort of uh, technology to enable that feature. It's not an out of the box feature. So back on the workbench I've selected these models to be the next items that are going to receive a tail lamp. The Mark 1 coach is part of my Mark 1 uh, passenger train so that needs a lamp obviously. The tank wagons I've recently finished weathering and painting so it'd be nice to get a tail lamp on that just a sort of final flourish to that little project. And this bogey bolster uh, wagon it's just sort of a little bit of a challenge as it's going to be a little bit more difficult uh, to make this work as it's you know basically a flat wagon there's there's no insides uh, to hide the circuitry to do this i've been using these dcc concepts lights there are various methods uh, for doing this you can do it completely yourself just buy a couple of bits of electronics from somebody like rs components and you can come up with something relatively quickly it won't take too long to install but i like these for one particular reason and that reason is the lamps themselves you can see how authentic these look uh, very very well detailed given the incredibly small size it's also worth mentioning that these come with the associated circuitry uh, pickup springs and wiring uh, to make all this happen so uh, quite a handy little box so I'll take this coach apart and uh, we'll fit the light and put it back on the layout and give it a test and then we'll move on to the uh, tank wagon and finally that flat wagon and see if we can uh, squeeze a light into there. So I've taken the coach apart, we've now got just the chassis, two bogies and wheels. So the next thing to do is to get power from the track into the circuitry that I'm going to put inside the coach. For me personally, I like to have the, uh, the track actually power uh, the devices installed on the trains and that way as long as the track is clean and the uh, iceberg rolling stock is clean, it's always going to work. For collecting current from the track there's a couple of different ways of doing it. Personally I like to use these, these are the DCC Concepts pickup springs and the tail lamp kit actually comes with a few of those in the box. So that's what I'm going to be using in this video. They also make these wiper style pickups which I have used in the past and they work fine as well. A little bit easier to install but they uh, do cause a certain element of drag 
uh, on the train. So if you've got lots of these fitted to all the coaches, let's say you've got eight coaches and you've got each one uh, that's got a load of these attached to it, it's going to take one hell of a loco to pull that train and you can end up with some problems. These cause no friction at all. I've been probably been using them for about 10 years and I'm going to be using them again in this video. A little bit more involved to install them. So here's one of the wheel sets and you can see it's made of a few different parts and we're going to be putting the pickup spring along the axle just there. So there's a couple of things we're going to need to do. This is fairly typical for what we have here in the UK on our model trains. You'll have an axle you can then see a plastic bushing and then the wheel itself. So the wheel is not electrically connected to the axle. If both wheels were connected to the axle, then as soon as you put the item on the track, you would have a short circuit. So it is necessary to insulate the wheel with these little plastic bushings from the axle to prevent a short circuit. You can also see the axle on this particular model is black in colour. It has a coating on it of some description which prevents uh, conductivity of electricity. So my pickup spring is not going to work if I just put it straight on there. So what I need to do is remove the black coating. Really very easy, it only take a minute. And I need to bypass one of the plastic bushings so I can get power from this wheel here and then on the next wheel along I'd be getting power from the other side so we've got positive and negative and that would complete our circuit obviously if I was to get power from this wheel and this wheel then we're going to short the whole thing out so you're going to need to use at least two wheel sets on the item of rolling stock to power the circuitry in this case I'm going to use all four wheel sets um, to ensure that we get nice reliable running. So I'll go ahead and fit one of these pickup springs. It looks a little bit involved when you first do it but it really isn't very difficult and uh, once you've done it a couple of times you can do a couple of coaches in an evening. So they're just a push fit if you never took one of these apart before so I just get it between my fingers and just push and pull and there you go the wheel has come off next we need to remove the plastic bush and this can be a little bit tricky as it's pressed in there so what i do is i place the wheel over something with a hole in it so that i can push down on that plastic bushing and sort of release it from the wheel take something about the right size with a slight taper on it in the case i'm going to use this uh, old paintbrush we're just going to push down And then we see there that's, uh, that's partially released it there, it's popped through. So now what we can do is just prise that out with a screwdriver. This is a piece of 1000 grit sandpaper backed onto some foam. I like to wrap the foam around the axle like that, obviously with the sandpaper side on the axle itself, and just turn the axle. And this will remove the blacking material, it's very easy to do, but it's a pain to film because everything is absolutely tiny. So there you go, you can see the uh, sandpaper has done a cracking job of removing the blacking and that axle will now conduct perfectly, whereas this one will conduct barely at all. So if we fit the pickup spring onto the axle, you can see how that sort of just slides beautifully on there. There's almost no friction when these are running. So perfect, you can have a whole train full of these and it's gonna run as if you never modified it in the first place. It'd be nice and super smooth. So what we'll end up doing is soldering a wire onto the end of the pickup spring there and that will go to the circuitry inside the coach. But uh, next thing to do is to actually get power into that axle. We need to bypass that plastic bushing on the wheel that uh, we removed earlier. To get power past that plastic bushing on the wheel, all I do is I take a very thin piece of wire, strip that back, take the bare pieces of metal wire out of it and then you can just about see that you wrap it round the plastic bushing and then when you put that back into the wheel and put the wheel back on the axle you're going to create a bypass and the wheel will conduct electricity into the axle which will then get collected by the pickup spring and allow whatever you've installed in the coach to operate. So I've just pressed the bushing back into the wheel and you can see how the wire wraps around that creating a circuit. 
So I've just pushed the wheel back onto the axle. I use a DCC Concepts back-to-back -back gauge to ensure that the gap between the wheels is correct so it still runs nicely on the rails. And a good bit of practice to do after you've done each wheel set is to just make sure that the modification has worked. So I have a multimeter set to continuity. Place one probe on the pickup spring, another probe on the wheel. You can see the reading on the multimeter there showing that we have continuity between this wheel and the axle, which means it's going to collect power from the track. Then once the wheels are installed back in the train, I'll make sure that one of the bypassed wheels is on this side and the other wheel is on this side. So we're going to collect power from both the left and right hand rail to power the circuitry in the train. It takes a little bit of work to achieve, but once you get into a rhythm you can do several wheels very quickly and it's nice and reliable. Once it's working, you've checked it with the multimeter, that's going to work for years to come. So I finished modifying the wheels and fitted them back to the bogies and then put the bogey back on to the coach. You can see we've got two wires for each wheel running along the coach here to this end where it meets up with the other pair of wires for the bogey at the other end of the coach. The position of wires and layout within whatever it is that you're going to be adding a light to will differ significantly from vehicle to vehicle. In this case, I've run the wires up to this end of the coach, as on a British Rail Mark 1. This is where the toilet is situated, and I can hide the circuit board quite neatly in the end of the coach without being seen. Also, as mentioned previously, the addition of that type of pickup arrangement means the coach is exceptionally smooth running. So you can hook lots of these up and it's not going to have any detrimental effect on the loco that's pulling the train. So I'll go ahead now and fit the lighting circuit for the flashing tail lamp in this case. This is where I deviate slightly from the instructions that come with these. You can see we have a small blue uh, chip which actually is the brains of the operation and it also has a switch on it for an adjustable flash rate to cater for different styles of flashing tail lamp. As you can see I've made some slight changes to the wiring here. So looking at the connector itself, we have several wires. Starting from the left, orange and grey go to the LED itself, the bit you're actually interested in. Black and red go to the track pickup, so they'll go to those wires um, that are coming from the wheels of the coach. And then you have these three wires on the right. You've got yellow, purple and white. Those last three wires connect to this hall trigger. You position this on a strategic place underneath the vehicle and when it passes over a magnet that is included in the box that you place in a strategic location somewhere on the layout, when it passes over the magnet it will switch on the tail lamp. When it passes over the magnet again it will switch off the tail lamp. This means that when you place the vehicle on the track the light will not flash until it receives an instruction to do so by means of that hall trigger passing over a magnet in the track. I messed about with that about two years ago uh, for a couple of hours experimenting and I encountered a couple of issues. I personally found this to be quite annoying as the train would go around the layout. You might get one lap with the light flashing and then it would turn off when a bit of dirt or a bump or a gap or whatever was encountered. Then you might get half a lap with it flashing and it turns off again for same sort of reason. When you watch the train go past, sometimes it'd be flashing and sometimes it wouldn't. I decided that that was quite irritating and I just wanted the flashing tail lamp to be operational, provided that the layout was switched on. It also makes the wiring a little simpler, so disregard that entirely and solder the yellow and purple wire together. The effect of this is that the tail lamp flashes continuously all the time, provided the vehicle is on the track and the the track is powered up via the controller. If you want to switch the lamp off for any particular reason, you could wire in a switch instead of installing uh, just a, a complete solder joint. The white wire can be disregarded entirely. Personally, that's how I like to do it. The lamps are then always flashing, and I know if I move a train out of the fiddle yard and start it going around the layout, I know that when it passes me and the camera that that tail lamp is going to be flashing. And if for any reason it encounters a bit of dirty track, then it will stop flashing briefly and then start flashing again straight away as soon as power is regained. So I'll connect these four wires up, trim that white wire, insulate this joint, and then we'll have a look at the uh, completed setup in the coach. 
I've drilled a small hole through the lamp iron into the back of the coach and then soldered the wires accordingly, making sure to include one of the supplied resistors to dim the brightness so it's not too intense. There we have the coach back on the track and as you can see the lamp is working quite nicely. So I can now tidy up the wiring and put everything back together as well as securing that lamp in the vertical position with a little bit of super glue. Okay, so I've tidied up the wiring. Any bare metal connections, I just put a little bit of Vallejo liquid mask over just to stop anything from shorting out. And as you can see, it's quite a nice fit at the toilet end of the coach. So when I put the body back on, that will disappear from view. Okay, so I've gone ahead and started to add the tail lamps to the freight rolling stock. This tank wagon, a little bit of a challenge, but not massively difficult. As you can see on the uh, Backman TEA wagon, which is what this is, uh, you can remove the end caps and it serves as a perfect place to hide all of the circuitry and the wiring. So I've just stuffed all that in there and been very careful, of course, to solder up the wires underneath and hide any of it from view. So underneath you can see the very thin enameled wires. I've run them through that small hole just there. They then run along the under frame of the wagon to get uh, a connection at the other end. You see they reappear and go to these wheels as well. So uh, both ends of the wagon are serving as pickups so it should be nice and reliable and when it's on the track it's almost impossible to see the wires. I've drilled out the lamp iron at the end and fitted the tail lamp. As mentioned previously, all the circuitry is stuffed in there, so I'll replace the cap and just sort of tidy up any damage to the weathering or anything that I might have done. Okay, there we go. The end cap's back on, and you can just about see the wires on the right-hand side sneaking up into the body of the wagon. But once that's running on the layout, you're never going to notice. There it is, back on the layout. And of course, during the process, always make sure that everything still works before committing and gluing everything back into position. Something else I always check is that both bogies are working. So if we move this one from the track, you can see it's still flashing. So this end is working correctly. Put it back onto the track, take that end off, and you can see it's still flashing. So both sets of pickups at both ends of the wagon are working correctly so this should run pretty reliably in future. So I've just finished installing the lamp to the last wagon. This one was quite a bit more difficult due to the limited space obviously to hide the circuitry but I've managed to conceal it underneath. So I've tried to go for the neatest possible installation. You can see the two pickups there and then all of the wiring runs down the central sort of spar of the wagon and I've hidden the little chip in the center behind one of the air tanks and you don't see it unless you get right down at eye level and look through the under frame of the wagon. Could even go as far as actually painting um, all of this. You could spray all of that with a sort of dark brown just to blend things in and then it would just look like a random bit of detail underneath the wagon. Then of course we've got two enameled wires running up to the other end to collect current from the wheels at the far end of the wagon. Side on I'm quite pleased and you can just see the circuit there so you have to get right down to this sort of level and look underneath and even then sort of concealed in darkness you wouldn't necessarily know what it was but from normal viewing distance it looks unchanged. So that completes those three vehicles, very pleased with that and it just adds a lovely feature to the end of the train, something else to look at as the train goes around the layout, a little bit of a talking point, something you don't often see and it's also a very important piece of detail that makes the layout more realistic. It is quite fiddly and delicate to install but certainly worth the effort and once you've done one or two and get into the rhythm of it, it's fairly straightforward to tackle other pieces of rolling stock and go for more challenging stuff like that bogey bolster wagon on the right hand side. Here's an example of a four wheeled wagon, I just thought I'd give one of these a go. So you can see I've used some different pickups, these are again DCC concepts, but they're the wiper style pickups. So on a long train full of these it's going to uh, cause quite a lot of drag, but as this is a freight train only this last wagon will be powered and I need to make use of every single wheel to collect power 
to ensure that that light stays flashing as it rumbles around the layout. So there you can see the enamel wires used for the pickups and then we've got the red and black wire from the circuitry just poking through a hole I drilled in the chassis of the wagon and then all the same stuff that you've already seen is inside with the tail lamp attached to the back of the wagon on one of the lamp irons. So there you go, hope you enjoyed the video, perhaps picked up the odd idea or tip. It is quite a nice little project to do and certainly adds a real little something to the, to the layout and the general appearance of how things look when they're running around. So I'll be back as soon as I can with the next video and as you can see in front of you we're starting to make a little bit of progress on the station and I'm really pleased to be working on this area again and hopefully we'll be able to get it up to the same standards as the rest of the layout if not better. So I'll be back as soon as I can once I've made enough progress.